So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you some different examples of ways that mediums can affect different types of waves. What I will do is we'll talk about a medium, something, an object or a type of material that's going to affect the wave. And then we'll talk about how it affects the wave. And remember, there's four different ways that it affects the wave. There's transmission, which is going straight through, not affected. There's reflection, which is it bouncing off. There's refraction, which is that the light actually bends. And then the last one is absorption, where it actually takes the energy into it and it actually will turn it into heat. Your job is to identify the medium as we go through and the way that it's being transferred, which I will identify those as we go. And then you'll need to go back to your assignment and fill in some examples of the medium and how it transfers the energy. So when energy or waves are transferred from one medium to another, the difference in the mediums can affect the way that the energy travels. One example is in here, we have two different mediums. I've got air and I have water. If I put a straw, you know the straw is solid, but when I stick it into the water, it looks like what? It looks bended. Looks like it's bent or looks like it's broken, but I take it out and it's the same. What's happening here is that as the light travels through the air, it travels at a different speed than it does through the water. By changing mediums, it causes the light to travel at a different speed, which causes the light to bend. Well, this right here is just some craft foam. And you'll notice you can see where the light's hitting and it casts a shadow, but it's not reflecting back into the camera. But if instead I use tin foil, the light is actually bouncing straight back into the camera, which is reflection. And so the reflection occurring is obviously because the light is hitting the, the metal and it's bouncing off at a different angle. This is a tuning fork. It vibrates back and forth. When I hit it, the vibrations are transmitted through the, the tuning fork and they, through the air in between and they bounce back and forth between the two prongs. If I touch one side of the tuning fork and hit the other, it doesn't work. But if I hit one side, it'll allow the two to vibrate. It's hard for you to see it vibrating. So to make sure that it's obvious, Uh, all right, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ring a tuning fork and I'm going to set it on the counter um, and then he's going to tell us what he hears. What do you hear? I can hear it through the table. It's like coming through. Uh, so it's going through the table. Now the table is made of granite. So in this case, the medium is granite. granite, and the energy is going through the countertop, which would be transmission. So what we're looking at here is another time where glass acts as a, as a medium. In this case, though, it's not acting as a medium for the light. It's going to act as a medium for sound. Now, if you'll get in close and take a look at those water waves that are going on there. Can you see those? And based on how much water is in there, it will actually change the note. Does it get higher? It does. Now, a higher pitch noise is a shorter wavelength. And the shorter the wavelength, the higher the pitch. So each time I'm doing this, the wavelength is getting shorter and shorter. To make it low again, I just have to fill it up. So the medium is the glass. The sound or the vibrations is going through the glass, which means that the sound is being transmitted through this medium. So there you go. So as you can tell, one eyeball looks bigger than the other one. What I'm using are two different shaped lenses. Both are glass, so the medium we're looking at is glass. 
but one of them is concave, which means that it's curved in, and one of them is convex, which means it's curved out. Now, if we go down onto something small, we use the concave mirror. Oh, here's an ant. You can see that it's an ant. It doesn't really help us see it much better. But if I use the convex mirror, it makes it larger. It's like a magnifying glass. Correct. Because that's what a magnifying glass is. Correct. So if I put these two next to each other, you can see the ant's small, ant's big. Ant's small, ant's big. So if we're talking about what's happening to the light in these two different mediums because of the shape, we aren't changing colors, but we are bending the light. And that's because in this one, it's bending it so the light gets bigger. In this one, it's bending the light so the light gets smaller. So we're dealing with refraction with this. Not reflection. Light is being transmitted, but it's being changed because one of them is going smaller and one of them is going larger. So one of the nice things we have modern day are mirrors. Mirrors were not always as very nice and smooth. One of the reasons why we use mirrors in our bathrooms is because of their property as a medium and what they do to light. When light hits a mirror on the back side of the glass is a reflective surface. And so, as we might assume, it's doing reflection to the light. It reflects that light back into our eyes and we see an exact opposite of ourselves. So we use glass because it's a medium that has a very specific property. It's a window because we want it to let light in, which means that glass does a great job of transferring light from one medium to another. It doesn't really change the light at all. For example, you can see me pretty well. It does affect the sound somewhat, but the light is able to transfer through very easily. So many of you have seen this phenomenon occur when it rains outside. So this is light going through the droplets of water. Now the thing is, is what's happening to the light is as the water droplets, as the light goes through the water droplets, the light actually slows down just a little bit. And so when it does that, each of the different colors has a different amount of energy. And so each of the covers, colors bends just a little bit, which causes a rainbow to occur. So it's known as refraction because it's basically bending the light. So red will be bent a different amount than the yellow, than the, than the other colors. And so because of that, it separates them out just a little bit enough that you've got the rainbow. This is a metal rod. It's not hollow, it's completely solid. And it's from Hex. Ah, I swear, this isn't in post-production. Why this is Peter? This is totally what actually happened. It sucks. <laughs> the dog doesn't like it next door. So, what is happening? Shut up, Max. <laughs> Silence, Max. So, what's happening with this is with this metal rod, as I run my finger along it, it's actually causing the rod to vibrate. I have uh, a high frequency because I have high. rosin on my finger, which makes my fingers a little bit sticky. So, as I run my hands down, it causes the medium which is this metal rod, to vibrate. And the vibrations bounce back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And you can hear that they're still vibrating even now. So with this, this is causing not only the bar to vibrate, but the reason I can hear it is this is a mechanical wave, which means it has to have uh, air or some kind of medium for it to travel through. If we were in outer space, you would not be able to hear this at all, no matter how much I did this. So, this is called a singing rod, by the way. Um, and basically, it it's just... very poorly. It's a beautiful singing. It's lovely. That makes your ears bleed. That's not. I'm sorry for everybody wearing headphones while watching this. So, who 
I'm here in my garden with my flowers. And as you can see, there's a lot of different colors here. So we have yellows and pinks and reds and greens. Well, what makes all of these different colors a different color is actually the medium that's affecting them. So when light is coming from the sun, the light from our sun contains all of the colors of the rainbow, which makes it white. But when it hits a tulip that we call red, there's something going on there. The light that's hitting the tulip is white, but it's coming back as red. So what's happening? Well, the medium of the tulip's petals is actually absorbing some of the light and it's reflecting some of the light. So the red tulips are actually reflecting back the red light, but it's absorbing all of the other colors of light. So in this case, with a violet iris, it's reflecting back the purple light and it's absorbing all the other colors. So if that's true, plants use light to grow, right? But they do it in their leaves. So what is the one color that plants can't use to grow? Green. That's correct. It's weird because we think of plants as being green, but green is the one color of light that they cannot use. So one of our examples is the difference in how light will affect different colors. So for example, here we have, and some of you may have experienced this in your life, we have a white sidewalk or a grayish sidewalk, and then we have the black pavement of the street. I'm gonna measure the temperature of both of these for you guys to, to decide what you think is going on here. So, right? This is a That's the sidewalk. So it is 83 degrees. Now I'm gonna move just a few centimeters over and measure the temperature of the black pavement on the street. And the that reading went up is... By six degrees. It did. So there is a difference in temperature, even though these two have been in the same place all day long with the same sun shining on it, they are not the same temperature. Well, the white is reflecting some of the light and the black is absorbing it. So the black absorbs that light and turns it into heat energy. Whereas the white, as you can see, it's a lot lighter. It's reflecting the energy. So if you think about it, what light is being reflected? Oh my gosh, the sprinkler's turning on! Ah, Run! <laughs>